Hi, I'm Heather Catchpole. Welcome to Careers with STEM Online. And today we will be talking to New South Wales Young Australian of the Year and the founder of Deadly Science, Corey Tutt. Welcome, Corey. Oh, thank you for having me. It's um, it's it's a pleasure to be here, even under these circumstances. So, Corey, tell us about Deadly Science. What is it, and why did you start it? So, Deadly Science is this um program that I created that is empowering the next generation of Indigenous kids into STEM and really just um letting them believe and dream and dream big and it's okay to have an imagination and ask questions. Um, if you've ever asked why the sky is blue or the grass is green, that's okay. And that's a STEM question. And, you know, I created this program because I started work at the um, University of Sydney as an animal technician and I, I'm an Indigenous girl myself. So I'm from Kamilaroi country. Um, Pop and dad were from Moree. And I never really, um, I've never really met anyone in STEM doing what I was doing um, as a STEM professional, as an animal technician working in the labs, that was Indigenous. And I, I often wondered why that was. Um, so I started volunteering with the AIM mentoring group um, about three and a half years ago, now, now four years ago. And we started doing these science talks and, you know, started talking about space stations. Um, funnily enough, that's one of the first conversations I had with these group of kids and they were teenagers and they were, you know, between the ages of 14 and 16 and, um, you know, watching at home, you'd probably know what it's like talking to a 16-year-old and they sort of roll their eyes at you and, you know, oh, who's this guy? He's going to tell us to stay in school and don't do drugs. And But we actually had these really rich, knowledge-filled conversations where we'd be like, we're talking about space stations and, you know, the kids originally did not believe me that there was a space station in the sky, um, that they, that it was this thing that they probably just, you know, read about that wasn't true. And we started um, showing him live stream of like astronauts. Um, they were working on the space station at the time and um, videos. And well, they started asking questions. Well, how do they get food up there? How do they get oxygen up there? How do they get water up there? Um, and then we sort of turned it around and we sort of said, well, do you know we've got this, um, we started doing this other science talks, which we were talking about CRISPR-Cas9 and how we're using it to, you know, model DNA, and then we could turn it into the ecology side, so we could tie it back into traditional knowledge. And um, you know, there was a recent paper that um, was discussing bilbies, and um, we had indigenous rangers um, plus researchers with all the bells and whistles and radio tracking, and the indigenous rangers were finding the bilbies six seconds faster on average than the scientists with all these amazing technology. I was participating in the failure time days. So we were talking about um, kids were going to these um, sort of programs with AIM and there was the army, there was an arts person um, and it was all these jobs, but there was no science. Um, and eventually it was just me with my iPad um, and my phone and just talking about science. And quickly, none of the kids were going to the cool stuff that you'd be expecting to, them to go to. They were going to the science talks because um, really science is for everyone. Um, you know, again, I bring back the analogy, if you've ever asked a question or wondered how science works, they're science questions. Um, and these kids had these ideas that, you know, science was all lab codes and you needed to yeah. be, um, you know, in the 1% of the population that is freakishly intelligent, but, you know, they were natural scientists and it was instilling a belief in them that they could ask questions and they could believe in themselves and they could do this. Um, and, you know, we started, um, I looked at some remote schools and I said, oh, well, I've got to do more. And if these teenagers can be as engaged in science, um, then I'm sure younger kids would be equally or if not more engaged. One of the schools that I approached had 15 books in the whole school. Wow. And I know what a lot of people are going to be thinking that, you know, how can a school have 15 books in it? Thank you, Corey. What happens is the books get old, they get destroyed, some get taken, um, and 
the school had no budget to replace those books. So it wasn't the teacher's fault. It wasn't that they had given up. It was more, and like, it was more, your school has 45 kids in it. Um, you know, you're not going to get as much funding if only 20 of them turn up. You know, we can, um, I think with a lot of these kids, they just need that one spark, you know, that one little, um, you know, chink in their armour that, you know, if they're really interested in something, whether that be AFL or, you know, reptiles like I was or um, dinosaurs like Charlie from Robinson River was, it's that one little, that little, little point of interest, that spark, that can lead them down a path of many other things learnings um so that's what we sort of the teachers know this they just need the resources so we, that's how we sort of started sending the resources and the feedback we've been getting from these communities is that um you know deadly science is really for them it's a program for them they feel like um, they're part of it they are part of the design process and they're so grateful but really i'm grateful for them because they they're the people that are um you know, a lot of the work they do doesn't get noticed. Um, and, you know, Deadly Science has been a little bit of a platform for that. I want to empower people to believe in themselves. Um, again, you know, against the odds, um, you can do it. And, you know, for me, that's the most important thing. Um, but if there's any financial component they can chuck towards some books and we'll be grateful for it. But, you know, the main thing with us is just, you know, just get enjoyment out of what we post and um, what we do. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I, I absolutely love what you do, Corey. It's been such a pleasure hearing about your STEM story and how you're taking STEM um, out there and also really look forward to hearing the stories that are going to come back from, um, you know, kids sharing their Indigenous knowledge and sharing their deep, deep STEM history as well. So um, thank you so much, Corey, for joining us. We'll put the, um, the URL so we can follow you online and we'll catch you online soon. Thank you for having me and everyone stay deadly. <laughs>